Hi, I'm Steve, the introverted traveler. I've made it my mission in life to explore the beaches, deserts, mountains, and even cityscapes around us, and to do so while avoiding contact with as many people as possible. And although I will never hang out with you for any reason, I do invite you to join me on my journey. Come and see the world through the eyes of an extreme introvert. On this edition, we are hiking the dormant volcano, Mount Kanaktai, near Kelseyville, California. Along the way, we will take in the beauty of nearby Clear Lake, experience history among the trees, and then make our way to an old fire lookout. This, and much more, on this Introverted Travel. Greetings. We are back once again on another adventure. And there's people all over the place, as there always are. Today, I'm basically in the Clear Lake volcanic field here in Clear Lake, California. I am climbing on, uh, okay, I can't pronounce this. I believe it's Mount Konuchi, and I'll put the spelling below it here. But it's essentially an ancient volcano. However, it's, uh, this whole area is on the uh, volcanic threats list from the USGS. It ranks like number 35 or something. And I had a whole thing where I was going to read Wikipedia to you and all that, but there's people. So, the trailhead, we're going to go up to the various peaks of this mountain today. That's what we're doing. The trailhead is about six miles up a dirt road. Winds around. There's private property all around, but I'm in a county park area. I get to the trailhead. And of course, people. There's people behind me, so I'm gonna make this brief. It's gonna be miserable, well, at least until I get to the point where there's no people. We're once again doing yet another volcano. It's a hard hike, it's about nine miles, according to all trails. So who knows what it really is, but that's where we are today. Complaining about people, going into a volcano, and whining about all trails. It's like every single video I ever do. There's kids too. All right, I'll see you soon. Well, there's another view of Clear Lake. It's literally a lake that I guess is clear. I don't know, I've never actually been on that lake, but uh, you can see the reflection of clouds in it, so that's kind of cool. And the reason why I'm showing you this now, because this is just a little break in the trees, it's not a spectacular view. Hoping to have some of that up above, but it's either cut to something like this, or you get Fire Road the movie, which literally for like the last mile and a half has been the, the trail. Just, you know, it's Fire Road. I mean, Fire Roads are beautiful and all that. And they're actually usually pretty convenient when hiking because they're, you know, quick and painless, but, not the most exciting video. Hey, look, everybody, it's a fire road. Yay. Well, it's better than saying, hey, look, there's a fire road full of people, I'm, I'm sure. But I will say that uh, coming down, the views might be nice. But going up, no, just fire road. I got uh, crap covering my boots because it's a dusty, dirty fire road. Again, I've got to emphasize the fact that it's a fire road. But yeah, so I'm... Uh, Hopefully going to be making it to something other than, you know, Fire Road Central. But so far, so good. It's uh, not exactly a challenging hike, I would say. It's just an uphill hike. So if you don't mind uphill, come join me on the Fire Road. But don't, because I don't want to be near. Just join me later when I'm not here. Yeah, that'll work. But until then, look at the beautiful Fire Road. Isn't it majestic in its natural splendor? Well, as usual, my first milestone is a bathroom. But I have now reached the part of the fire road that now splits. Over there, I believe, is Buckingham Peak. We're gonna do that one first, and then the other peaks are straight ahead up in that general direction. But the reason I have turned on the camera is this. I have a nice little view of at least part of Clear Lake. That is beautiful. 
you know, as beautiful as this part of Northern California can be, it'd be great if we could see the rest of the lake, but hey, you know what? Something is better than nothing. And I believe we're just gonna go up to those towers up there. I'm not sure, because I've never been up there, but yeah. So, fire roads do take you places. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse, but uh, this is pretty cool. I'm hoping to get even better views of the lake up there. So, uh, yeah, let's go do that. All right, so beware of wildlife. I'm pretty sure at this point in my hiking career that the wildlife put up signs that say beware of introvert, but uh, you know, we'll beware of the wildlife. I don't know what's out here, but uh, we got Wright Peak, Howard Peak. We'll be visiting those shortly. We're gonna go do Buckingham Peak, which is 0.81 miles. And then there's a cabin which is apparently some sort of historic cabin. I, I don't know, I was reading about it on the internet, but then I glazed over and fell asleep. So, one last look at the lake. Let's go to the uh, Buckingham Peak. I was wondering why I was getting great cell reception up here. The most exciting peak I've ever been to. I come up and there's cell phone towers. Yay! But that allows me to make at least one point about hiking. I get a lot of cell reception. Even in places you don't think you'd get it. I mean here, obviously. I, uh, I'm in the middle. It's hard to tell from my vantage point here, but I'm basically in the middle of Clear Lake, which is the big city area. So I'm not too shocked that I have cell reception here. Aside from the fact that there's towers here, I, I figure I'd have it anyway. But even up in the High Sierra, uh, Yosemite National Park, all these places, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere and hey, I got two bars, I got three bars. So I'm at the top of, uh, what is it, Bringham Peak? Just about the end of the El Trails map for this particular part of the trail. And let's see if we have any views aside from the uh, razor wire and cell phone towers. Unfortunately, there's trees everywhere. I mean, trees are beautiful, but... Uh... All right, we got the cell phone towers. There's a little bit of a view. And I guess the... Uh, the trail keeps going from here, but uh, this is the turnaround point, at least for all trails. The cell phone tower is making noises, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't like me. So I'm not going to linger here. I wish I could show you something cool, but uh, yeah, there's just a few mountains out there, and the rest is just trees blocking the way. So we're going to head over to the other peaks and hope that's at least, you know, photogenic. I think it may be a little bit different than this one, but uh, this was the first peak. We got two or three others left. Well, the one bonus about doing that particular peak as the first peak is even though there were absolutely no views up there and all I saw was a cell phone tower. Yay. Um, there was nobody up there except for me. I sat up there, I had my snack, and then on the way back, on the way down, which I'm still going down, by the way, I'm not quite done yet, there were people coming up. But uh, yeah, I got to sit there with the, the natural wonder that is a cell phone tower and commune with telecommunications. So I do have really good cell phone reception right now, though. I got like five bars or four bars or whatever it is. So, uh, so there's that. Okay, so I made it back to my central point of, uh, you know, the disgusting chemical toilet. So, we're now headed in this direction. I'm moving the camera back and forth so you can see there, we're going that way. Uh, Wright Peak is 1.48 miles, Howard Peak 1.44 miles, and then something called Doan Cabin slash Oak Grove, 0.76 miles out of course is the supposed historic uh, cabin. There's a restroom up there 
we'll uh, investigate that too. And uh, as I said earlier, let's beware of wildlife because wildlife is going to beware of me because I'm probably the scariest thing out here at the moment. You know, an angry, grumpy, introverted weirdo. All right, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully we'll see something other than a cell phone tower this time. So let's go check it out. Oh, I think I might be getting close to the cabin. There's people starting to show up everywhere. So again, there's the old rule. You can be hiking in solitude for, you know, eight miles, but if there's something cool at the end, they'll come. They'll show up right when you're there and they'll destroy your solitude. I don't know how they get there. I don't know where they come from, but it's just an inevitable, yeah, inevitable truth. Almost as truthful as the fact that I can't pronounce words. I don't know what's beyond those trees over there. Well, let's go find out. All right, next stop on the All Trails map is Downen Cabin slash Elk Grove, or Oak Grove, excuse me. That's uh, 0.09 miles. And that's down this way. This is getting kind of pretty in here. I mean, it's no cell phone tower, but it's getting kind of nice. Let's go check it out. Let's see. Mary, a widow who lived alone, created a system using mirrors to communicate and reassure her family in Lakeport. At around 2 p.m. every afternoon, weather permitting, she would signal her daughter Maud in Lakeport while standing at a location west of the cabin near the orchard. Maud would return the signal with her mirror to complete the communication. So this was the cabin right there. Let's see, in 1860, 16-year-old Mary Down, Down and left Arkansas for California. Ah, that's a good upgrade. On July 4th, 1903, she joined her son-in-law, Uville Howard, on a wagon ride up uh, Mount Konokti. Again, I can't pronounce crap. She fell in love with the beautiful views and the Canyon Oaks. And the land that was stolen from the natives that we were talking about earlier. <clears throat> Mary surprised her family by telling them she wanted to homestead there by herself. By fall of 1903, her cabin was under construction. She planted an orchard and grew vegetables using water that was hauled in wagons or collected in rain barrels. Later, a cistern was built that is still visible today. So there you go. There's your history lesson. This is the widow's cabin. And it is protected by a fence. And... It has a historic sign. Not sure it was worth hiking over to, but that's okay. We're going to hike back to the uh, main trail now, and we're going to head up to the peaks, and hopefully we'll be able to see some cool views. This is still much cooler than a cell phone tower. I, of course, missed the obvious observation that living in a cabin in the woods and communicating only by mirror is still better than hanging out with people. Hell, I want a cabin in the woods and I want mirror communication. I mean, forget the internet, I'll, I'll take mirrors. I mean, if that's all I've got, if it means not ever having to see anybody, mirrors sound like heaven to me. Oh, look at that. Another creaky looking fire lookout with crazy stairs. Oh boy, do I hope I get to climb that. All right, I'm actually headed up Howard's Peak first, which is somewhere ahead of me here because there were a bunch of people behind me and that chattering couple that went ahead of me. And I figured that they're all going to be attracted to that uh, lookout up there. And since we've already, you know, almost died on a lookout this summer, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead up here. And hopefully not almost die up here. All I will say, though, this is a rather, I mean, it's a steep hike, but it's a rather, you know, controlled hike. It's a nice, gentle hike up to these peaks. 
it's not like it's not like my my usual you know scrambling over you know four inch trails up the side of a cliff yeah no, none of that this time but uh yeah just nice gentle no screaming or falling or you know cracking bones not this week probably next week and last week and the week before but this week we get quiet Okay, this is starting to become my type of trail. And yeah, the trail's starting to disappear and look more rocky. You know, if it goes straight off a cliff, that's definitely what I'm into. All right, let's keep going. We're almost at the very top, we're at Howard's Peak. So far I see nothing but trees, but I'm hoping there's views up there. <laughs> Made it up, check out these views. I'll do it from some left to right here because for some reason the human brain is might right to left. So, check this out. This is the valley below. And we're gonna pan all the way over. And there's our beautiful lake down there. At least part of it, it's a, it's a big lake. And there you go, finally, something beautiful. Now, for some reason, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going to fall off these rocks, so I'm actually going to get in the dirt. There we go. There are, I don't know what this is. It's maybe cell phone related. I don't know. It says keep out, so I'm not going to question it, but yeah, they're on every peak. And you can see over there behind it is our fire lookout. We'll, uh, we'll head there next. But yeah, so far so cool. I mean, check that out. That is just beautiful. That I believe actually is, I think I'm looking in the direction of the wine country which uh, Clear Lake is above Napa Valley on a map. And then of course, Clear Lake in that direction. So I don't know exactly where the wine country is there. It's probably on the other side of those mountains, but that's sort of where we are today. And this is really, really beautiful. Let's go ruin it by, you know, breaking our leg on a fire lookout. Okay, so I do not know the backstory to this at all. All I know is this is a plane. And I did read something about it online, but I don't know the backstory. But, you know, I also don't know why they kept it up here. It's been here for a while, apparently. But, uh, yeah, plane wreckage on top of the mountain. I'm not even gonna comment on it. I mean, I'd rather crash my plane into a mountain than hike with other people, but uh, yeah. So, I don't know what this is about, but that's kind of cool. And we're just about to the lookout. We're almost done, folks. Well, we're almost at the turnaround point where we'll go back through all this stuff again. But uh, yeah, so far it's, it's quiet out here. I'm just waiting. I know there's more people coming. There were people up here and then they left because I went to the other peak. But you know there's somebody loud and obnoxious who's, who's gonna be coming up pretty soon just to ruin my moment. Actually, I hear some people ahead. They may already be here. All right, I'm finally up here by myself. I had to wait like half an hour for people to leave so I could get a cool shot, but here's Clear Lake for you. All right, we'll start over there. There's the uh, peak where we were a little while ago. And there's the lake right there. And we're still panning, panning. There's the other peak where the cell tower was. And over there, there's the marina. And yeah. So, it took me forever to get that shot since I had to wait a while, because there were other people. But uh, yeah, Clear Lake, you know it's splendor, you know it's glory. And then I, now that I finally got that shot, and of course the shot of the uh, lookout tower there, which by the way, you cannot go up to, but uh, you know, we've been to one, we've been to like all of them. So I'm gonna turn around here because I've literally completed the entire map. I just have to go back the way I came and then I can go home. One last look at the beautiful lake, folks. And let's go. Well, we're making, we're making progress getting back here. 
but as is fairly typical for this time of day, it's probably about four o'clock because you know, of course, I've been going very, very, very slowly. But uh, as is typical, the herds have thinned out. We don't have as many people up here and it is wonderful. The late afternoon is the introversion golden hour because most of the people come out here in the morning or the very late morning. They get everything done and they get the hell out. Me, I kind of meander and uh, my meandering, you know, covers all those phases. So everyone's here in the morning, I complain about it. Then everybody gets to the spot where I want to go, I complain about it. And then by the time I'm on the way back, there's nobody around and I'm happy. So it's, it's, a, it's a weird cycle, but uh, yeah. So I'm just about back to our little bathroom base here. And then I'll do the, uh, the last bit down the mountain, get back to my car, and then go home in, in that order. So that's where I am. I'm just going to keep going. Well, I hear other people behind me somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a quick trail riding on this trail. I am headed down the mountain and towards my car. So now is a good time to do it. And well, there's no people at the very second. So yeah, let's get this done. So on a scale of one to 10, one being the worst possible scenario for an introvert. And that's the number of people you'd encounter at Disneyland on the 4th of July versus a 10 on the other end of the scale which is the greatest thing ever for anyone who is introverted like myself and that's the number of people you would find in the middle of a field in Antarctica where it's really just you and the beautiful lovely beaked black and white tuxedo wearing penguins it's it's a introvert's dream it's absolute paradise it's absolute heaven versus the hell that is anything Disneyland so on that scale with the number of people I encountered today, I'm going to give this trail probably about a five. There were too many damn people this morning, but I haven't had too much uh, complaining going on today. I mean, normally I complain like, you know, like nothing else, but today it's been okay. There have been some other people and that has sucked, but overall the trail's been all right. It's a Sunday. It's actually Labor Day weekend which again, that means nothing because I'll probably post this on freaking Easter, but uh, yeah. So on that scale, we're about a five. The trail has been fairly, uh, I wouldn't say difficult or, ch well, maybe a little challenging. I mean, it's been uphill most of the way, which has been nice. And so of course now I'm going downhill, but yes, you need to be in, in shape for this trail. It is pretty challenging in those regards, but on the misery index, Remember, that's a one to five scale. One being no misery whatsoever, which is complete fiction because I'm always miserable to some degree. And a five being the most miserable ever. I'm probably, right now, I'm about a two because well, I see people. So, okay, it went up to a three. But yeah, overall, it's probably been about a 2.5 to a three because there just hasn't been a whole lot of people out today. So again, I see some people walking behind me. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. But that's your trail ratings for today, and I'll, I'll see you at the end here. Well, it's not too often that the trail tells me that uh, it hope I enjoyed its, the uh, visit to, uh, to its mountain. It's very polite of it. It wants me to uh, do uh, under 10 miles per hour, which I, I think I can very easily accomplish. And uh, it's telling me that the next stretch of trail is uh, closed to the public. Well, the next stretch of road is closed to the public. The next part of the trail is uh, through private property, but uh, you're allowed to go on the actual trail. So it's a very polite sign. Very nice. I'm pretty sure I can abide by that speed limit. I might get pulled over for being too slow, but uh, yeah, we are just about done. We are just about back to the car. So I think what I'm going to do now is we're going to do our summary. Let's recap what we did today. So. We went up to the top of, uh, again, I can't pronounce it, Mount Kanakti, Kanakti, something like that. I don't know. I'm, I can't even pronounce my own damn name half the time. So along the way, we saw a, a few people, too many, but not as many as usual. <clears throat> we saw a cell phone tower. We saw the uh, beautiful Clear Lake area. We saw in the distance the wine country. 
and we made it up to a lookout. We made it up to more cell towers and overall had a good day. So, you know what's coming now. I'm gonna call it quits here, at least as far as the video goes, and I'm gonna wish all of you to stay introverted. And I'll see you on the next adventure.